everybody, I'm Joey. And I'm Alex. And today we are going to talk about a post-apocalyptic game. We are indeed, yes. yes. And this We're going to save the world? Yes, we save are. Save humanity. Actually, no, we're not saving the world because the world's already over now. We're just kind of rebuilding the world. Yeah, we're trying to like forge a new path. Forge a new path. Mm. And we are doing so by resurging in... Resurgence! Resurgence! Hey, I like how you did that. That was good. Yeah, yeah hey. that, that's a little connection yeah, I there. I know, I know. That was smooth. Okay. Yeah, good. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. <laughs> resurgence. So this game is a worker placement style game, mm -hmm. and it's by the designer of Endless Winter. Correct. Stan Kradonsky, I believe his name. Okay. Yep, Kradonsky who designed Endless Winter. Mm -hmm. So we were pretty excited to have this hit the table. Yes. So before we talk about what we thought about it, let's see how it plays. Okay, we are set up for a two-player game of Resurgence right here. Now, this is the manual for Resurgence. It's very good. It's very detailed. There's not a lot that goes into this game. It's actually very simple. And there's a player aid in the back that tells you the icons. And on the back of everyone's player screen, you also have this that will take you through the entire game. Now, this game, again, this is going to be a quick overview. I'm not going to cover all of the rules, but this is just to kind of tell you what the game is. It is a worker placement slash bag building game. It is played over six rounds, and then whoever has the most victory points wins. All right, very simple. So, first off, these are all your workers for the worker placement. These guys are all different, and they... They have different abilities. They are worth two. Then your laborer here is worth one, and your hero is worth three. So to start the game, hero goes in the bag, and all of your laborers go in the bag. Then you've also got the resource track over here with the parts, food, and fuel. And then over here, another track here, which has ammo and meds. So all of this, leadership track up here, and of course your victory points. So everything goes into the bag. Then you're going to choose draft one of these. This one tells exactly what your hero is. So this one, my hero, will be a traffic cop. And on the bottom, I have an ability here. Every time I, I finish a mission, or when I do a mission, I don't have to spend either a med or an armor right there. Or actually, it's a bullet. So an ammo, either one of those, I don't have to spend. And you can do that once per round. Once you do it, you, the, the instructions say to turn it over, but if you're a magic person, you can just tap it. So once per round, that goes over here. Then I also get a mission. These missions right here will give victory points. This one, I have to be at an area that is brown, which would be this area right here. And then I have to spend a bread and a fuel. And once I do that, if I have someone there, I do that. I can take this mission, put it down here, and then I move up the number of victory points here, I get two points, okay? And then also, depending on where I put it here, it gives you an ability later. We'll get to that in a moment. So everybody gets one of those, and they get a mission, and the other one are this is discarded. So that is when this part, the player screen comes up. You're gonna put this player screen here as you put down your workers so people don't know where you're going or what you're doing. So everybody grabs four, as you move up this track, you can do different things in this building, but you have to pay to move up this track, and you can also pull more tokens. But to start off, you're pulling four. So, right here, let's say I'm gonna go ahead and I pull four out. I've got three, one more, four. So, I'm gonna place these on the track here. Say I wanna put my hero somewhere in the red district. I'm gonna put a couple of these guys somewhere in the blue district, and this right here means that I wanna put him somewhere on my board, okay? So, set these aside. Then everyone reveals at the same time. Once they reveal, you look at the strength in every area. This guy right here is worth two. So if he has won that, if, he has, if I have more strength in the red area than anyone else, I will move up one on the red track. So I would move my blue one up one, just like that. And then the same with each of these tracks. Now, if you have four, you're gonna move up two. So that's the way you move up the leadership track there. So once that is done, the first player goes first and you just drop your workers on where you wanna go. Every single one of these has different abilities that they can do. You can, for instance, take a worker here 
and then you can hire new workers up here and that you're gonna pay the bread at the top to bring them in and then say you decide to get this guy, he's a foreman, you'll put another one of these into the bag and he then gives you this ability to again use once per turn. So if I were to move there, I would then move my bread down one, he cost me one, and I've got him. And the next person would go. And finally, you would move around. So there are different things here that can be done. This one gets you fuel. Over here, you can get some parts. And also this right here is to build. And here, you'll notice on this board, I can build one of these. If I open up this ability, let me lift this up a little bit so you can kind of see this. This is the player board right here. If I were to build, I say, you know what? I'm gonna build right here the clinic. I turn this over, I get this, which means I get one ammo and one victory point. And now that has opened up that to use. Okay, so if I use a laborer and one fuel, then I would get two meds. So later, if I were to take a guy that was here, drop him here, I would spend one fuel, putting it down and go up two. So you do that with all your workers. All of these have different abilities and different things they do. And you can also go through and get different missions. All of these give different values and victory points and things. Now, in between rounds, all that is covered right here, okay? So then in between rounds, what you're gonna do is you're going to remove the two end workers, slide them down, and then you're going to refill right there with two more workers. On a under four player game, they're gonna go right here. All right, and then right here, you're gonna refill any missions that were taken because some of these allow you to take more missions. Put them up here. You only have three mission slots that you're working on and you put them underneath there. And then anyone in the rest area or that you've used will go back here to the rest area. So you can continue to grab the remainder out of your bag. And then you look at your completed missions. All of your completed missions go down here. For every completed mission you have here, you're going to get an ammo. Let me show you this again. For every completed mission you have here, you're gonna get ammo. Over here, you're gonna get meds. And over here, you can get a fuel or a bread. So you do that in between each. So completing missions is going to get you resources as well. Then you can move up this track. This track in the side, you're gonna start here. So to move up, you need to have at least five meds, five ammo, and pay two bread and two fuel. And once you do that, you can start building this room. And you also get to pull more from the bag on the second and third. On the first level, you pull four, second and third, you pull five, and the last one, you pull six. And that is all the way up here. And you also get victory points depending on how high you go. And these rooms get more and more powerful. And then finally, these mutants are here. Now there are four in a two player game, there are two in a three and four player game, I believe. But what these mutants do is they're gonna move around, like for instance, say we're switching. I'm gonna put these aside, draw two more mutant cards, okay? And they now go green and brown. So in the brown area, here we go, and green area, right here. So if one of these is in a certain area, and say I wanna put my worker here, I have to pay one resource on top of whatever that place charges or whatever the cost is of that place. Now it's the same if another player has a worker there because if someone else has a worker there, then I have to pay one and two, okay? So you can't block anybody, but you can make it more expensive to go there. So that is pretty much, in a nutshell, there's a few more rules as far as every round, one of these is flipped, beginning nothing happens. Next round, one of these is flipped. And this, for example, it says during the upkeep step, any player may discard one ammo to score three VP. So these change every round you go through and there are different things you can add as far as scoring mechanics, but that is pretty much basically the way the game is played in a nutshell. So let's send it back to the studio and let's see what we thought about it. <coughs> okay, so that is how it plays. Yes. Yeah, and that's a very simple overview. Of course, we did go into every yes. rule Click and icon. Now. There's a lot going on, but that is a simple, how to play the game. Yeah. At mm -hmm. its core, it's a worker placement game, but so much more. So much more, absolutely, All right. yeah. All right, so anyway, um, component-wise, what did you think? Oh, I loved it. Everything looked great. The boards were good. Yep. The, I liked the little, like, 
thing, the sheet, hidden sheet thing. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what that thing is called, but I liked how the, the, you have that. And then you have um, like how to play it too on that yep. inside. That was like a play raid. I, uh, that was great too. And then I also liked how on the back of the rule book, they have all the little icons and everything right there. So you can refer to it. This is not blank. It's not a picture is actually something useful. I liked this a lot. Yeah, and that mm. is having this out on the table, known yes. as iconography, is really good. It was very, very, very helpful. Yeah, so yes. and as far as the play rate stuff, they really nailed all yes. of that as far as being able to let you know how to play the game. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not that difficult of a game, especially no. at its core. No, absolutely, no it's not. Yeah, and talk about the artwork. The artwork, yeah. Yeah. Artwork, initially, I was like, ah, it's kind of bland, you mm. know? It's kind of like blah, but then it kind of grew on me. It's yes. that grunge-style, yes. post-apocalyptic. It fit the theme. It really did. It really did. I really liked that, yeah. I really, the artwork, mm -hmm. I did like a lot. Yeah, me too. I did really enjoy that a lot, yes. Had a great feel. Yeah. Now, okay, so gameplay-wise, a couple of things. One thing I like about this designer is, um, he did this in, in this winter as well, mm -hmm. worker placement games, when you go somewhere that somewhere else, someone else already mm -hmm. has gone, you're not blocked. No. And a lot of those worker placement games out there, they will first person there, that's it. He usually gives you either a benefit or a payment if you have to go there and you're not the first. Like in Endless Winter, first person there will get a benefit. And here, you have to pay an extra resource to go to that area. But it wasn't like a big deal. It wasn't you no. have to pay five resources or something. It was just one resource. Any resource you wanted to could be paid. I liked right. that a lot. It made it very, you know, because in when you're doing a little, um, your heat, your your secret little thing yep. right there behind your thing. You're planning out your turn, but if you're at the last round and someone's already gone there, you're not, your whole turn and your whole plan isn't completely out the window. Right. I did like that a lot. It's not that big of a deal. And the area that you're going is so large that you can pivot if you need to. Correct. If you had to, you can pivot. Right. But it's not, like I said, if you've got that specific person to go in that specific spot and someone else is already there, it's not a huge thing. It's not. Now, yes. also the path to victory on this is there are so many different paths Correct. to victory. And things you can ignore and still win. Mm. And you kind of wonder... I'm not going to go really high on this one. Like, for instance, this secret part right here. Yes. You're putting the people behind your board. Yes. And then where you go goes up on the leadership track. Uh huh. You could ignore that track and not care about winning. Or you could say, you know what? It's not as ideal for me to go to this area. But if I go on this here, I'll get that extra bonus, which will push me forward. Yes. And then I'll be able to get this resource. So it is a give and take in every aspect of the game. Co correct. And I, you know, you can. Are you going to go and try and win through the goals? Are you going to try and win through building up your building? Right. There's so, there's a lot of it's like a point salad win your it path is. of victory. I I did really enjoy that because every time you play, you want to try something new, or if something worked really good last game, you want to go back and try that again. There's so much to this game; it all just clicks and works. And I, one thing I really enjoyed is that when you're looking at the board, all the icons are clear and make sense. They do. I really, really enjoy that and appreciated that, that I could go, okay, I know here, I'm, I know what's happening, I've got it, you know? Right. I did really enjoy that. And every time you play this, you wanna go a different path too. Like you were talking about before, mm -hmm. like the first time I didn't really hire anyone. I just mainly focused on the missions, yes. and then I focused on building my area over here. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, well, you know what? Get, hiring these people, if, the more people you hire, then you get those people here, you get to tap them each round, and they can create a synergy mm -hmm. to where it's like, okay, I can tap in this guy, I can make this one resource into two, take one of these, put it here, make that into two, then do this. When I complete a mission, I then get this resource that then sets off this. There's so much going on. There's kind of an engine tableau building over here that you can go into, yes. or you can forget about this and you can focus on just getting missions done, mission after mission after mission. And it's there's there's so many different avenues to go, yeah. and it's nice because you look at other players and they're going totally different directions, mm -hmm. right? Which also doesn't clog up certain areas because there will be certain times where I'm like, I'm gonna, I need to get three bread, you know, and I know everyone's gonna go there, but no one went there. So then I'm wondering, <laughs> well, what, why aren't you guys still as concerned about this bread as I? And then I realize yes. you're going different directions. Yes. And you're wondering, well, how is this going to play out at the end? Yeah. Right? You know, if they're, they're just killing the leadership track up there, 
are they going to beat me out at this? And it's really, it's a neat give and take that it's just you're looking around and where is everyone else going with this? And then when you build, you are building mainly to get that room to be available for your worker, but then you're also getting the benefit of flipping over that token. It's like, well, hey, I just got three more victory points and this. And Mm. because you got one extra resource, that might change the direction of your turn. Correct, yes. I There's so much going on in this game, but it's not overly confusing. No. And it's very, it just, everything clicks in this game. It it's really It's very does. smooth. It Everything works together in such a great way. One thing I was also gonna say, it's played over six rounds. Right. So, and which is the perfect length. Yeah. I felt at the end of that sixth round, I'm like, oh, I wish I had one more round, but that's an okay problem to have. I don't mind that, but it it moves very quickly, and I enjoy that too. It's not a long game, and, and they say this is a Euro game, but for a Euro game, it's very easy to follow. It's very easy to teach too. And it's very thematic. And it's very thematic. It's it, this is just a fantastic game. I really, really enjoy this game. And I always think that games are better if they feel a little bit too short yes. than feel a little bit too long. Yeah, yeah. Because when you feel a little bit too long, it's probably not going to hit the table again no. very often. But a little bit too short, you're like, you know what? Ah, I wish I would have done this. Let's run it back yes. so I can do that. I was going to say, this is a game that we've talked about since playing it several times. We've talked about it over again, and it's one that we want to bring back and keep playing again yep. and again. So this is a game that I want to play again, even though I've played it a lot. I keep wanting to play it, and that is a sign of a great game. It is, and you've yeah. got that bag building aspect, which is, mm. I mean, it's funny how bag building is the core of so many great games. Yes. This one, it's just one of many. Yes. You know, so this is is propelled to one of my favorite bag building games, mm-hmm. Walker Place, but it takes everything. And yeah. I just, I love that being able to pull. And then also you've got the track on the side, that the higher you go, the more you get to pull. And it's just, man, there's there's so many, and there's so many things in this game we've played so many times that I haven't experienced yet. Because then I saw people grabbing extra workers. I'm like, wait, why do you get extra workers? So <laughs> yeah. I opened up this room. I'm like, I have never opened up that room. Yeah. So I haven't been able to do that. Mm-hmm. And it's just, man, it, there's a lot going on there. There is a lot going on. And that's why I've been mentioning how the workers are different. The ones yes. you pull out are like, hi, you know what? Your whole plan can change yeah. because I don't have the worker that needs to go there. But do I want to waste my hero on that area? Yeah. Or do mm-hmm. I want to use them over here? It's, there's a lot going on, there's a lot to plan in your turn, and there's a lot of pivoting, and everything that this does well is why is what makes a game good. Correct, yes, absolutely. And mm-hmm. it's, it's one that flew under my radar. Yeah. That I didn't know if I'd play, but now I'm really glad I did, and I just want to play it again. Oh, me too. I am looking forward to playing this game again. So, okay, yeah. give me a number. What did you think of the game? Um, I'm gonna give it an eight. You give it an eight? I'm giving it an eight. I'm gonna go a bit higher at 8.5. I was almost to nine, but I think 8.5 yep. at least. This is this is a fantastic game. This is an incredible game. I really enjoyed playing it. And the box is just like a perfect size. You don't think, it, it, this table presence is so huge, but it all fits in this box. The box is deceiving. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because you look at this box and people, I mean, subconsciously they judge a, a uh-huh. game by its box. There's a lot of game there in is this a, box. There is a lot of game in this bo- box. Yeah, it's, and it's amazing. Like I said, you're gonna be using your entire table to play this game, and it all fits in this box. Look how, you know, it's not that big of a So box. much going on. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, anyway, so if you want to help rebuild the world, if you want to play a great bag build, if you like mm-hmm. bag building, worker placement, if it's if you just like great games. I was gonna say, if you're looking for a great game, this is the game for you. And if you mm-hmm. like Endless Winter, then mm-hmm. same designer. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that is Resurgence. So thank you guys so much for joining us for the Dice Tower review. Thank you. See you next time. All right, bye guys. Bye.